Hi guys, this is Angela from the London App Brewery back with another episode. We're really sorry guys that we've not been so active on YouTube and it's because we're running a Kickstarter to build the world's best online programming school and it's been absolutely nuts. So apologize for that, but we are back today with an awesome tutorial on how to make an AR game like Pokemon Go. So at the London App Brewery, we've been absolutely obsessed with this game. Um, we, we get like a... Uh, office chat where somebody says oh my god there's an eevee outside and everybody drops whatever they were doing and runs outside to catch that eevee so i wish i could show you all of my pokemons and everything but as it is the way um the nantic servers are down and we are unable to actually show you anything i'm getting failed to get player information from the server i hope they scale their server slightly faster and Neantic guys, if you're watching, we'd be happy to help. Um, anyways, so today we're gonna make a AR game um, just like Pokemon Go. Um, so we're gonna show you one of the features that we're gonna build. And this is where you flick a ball to catch your Pokemon in uh, augmented reality. And this is really cool. There's not a lot of people doing um, a whole bunch of AR in game um, at the moment. And I think there's a lot of you guys who would like to make your own games like this. So here's a awesome tutorial. So let's get started. By the end of this tutorial, you'll make Pikachu appear on the palm of your hands with augmented reality. Looks pretty cool, huh? Okay, so firstly, let's talk about some of the tools that we be, will be using to make this um, app. So first and foremost, we're gonna be using Unity 5, uh, Unity 3G, which is gonna be the game development engine um, that will enable us to build this app. So this is an absolutely awesome game engine. It's one of our favorite. Um, and I know we get a lot of students who tend to ask us, you know, like, should I go for cross platform such as use uh, App Accelerator or Xamarin, or should I build my app natively? And we always, always say, don't don't do it, don't go for the cross platform because you will, your user experience will suffer and you won't be able to tap into all the hardware features. But this is probably the only exception um, in terms of game development, you should always be using a game engine. They have physics built in, they have gravity built in, they have like a whole load of tools that'll help you build your game. So we're gonna be introducing you to Unity if you've never uh, tried it before. We're also gonna be using a SDK from Vuforia, which um, is owned by Qualcomm. And this is a really, really nice um, little package of tools that'll help you create augmented reality games really quickly and really easily. And I'll show you how to go through that as well. And finally, we're gonna be getting our sprites from Nintendo um, and I'll show you how to download it for free, um, as well as how to download all of these packages and how to implement them. So let's begin. Okay, so first things first, we are going to download Unity 5. So this is obviously if you don't already have it downloaded. If you do, then just skip ahead. Otherwise, for you guys who are new to Unity, we're gonna go ahead and go to get Unity now. Okay, so now they show you their various pricing models and we're actually gonna pick the personal um, tier. And this actually allows you to generate up to 100,000 in revenue before you have to start paying Unity. So it's pretty cool. Um, just go ahead and click download now. And obviously I'm using a Mac, but the process is pretty similar if you are on a PC. So we're just gonna go ahead and download the installer. So currently most up to date is 5.3. And there we go, we've got the DMG file and just unpackage it. And then we're gonna open up the download assistant. Yep, I trust Unity. And then you're just gonna use the wizard to install Unity onto your hard drive. Okay, so now that you've downloaded and installed Unity, um, we're gonna create a Unity ID. So we're just gonna click on that um, on the download page and we're gonna click on create Unity ID. So there's nothing really special about this page. You're just gonna enter your details and register for a Unity ID. Okay, so now we're gonna open up our Unity, uh, which we've just downloaded, and it's gonna show you a opening screen like this. So just make sure that your Unity version is 5.3 point something. Um, if not, then just upgrade it to the latest version. So we are going to open a new project and we're gonna call it Pokemon, ooh, gotta get the E right, Pokemon AI and I'm gonna save it somewhere arbitrary and make sure that 3D is uh, checked. So it's in red and then we're just gonna go ahead and create the project. 
Okay, so this is our brand new Unity project. Here is our game scene. Um, here is our game where nothing exists because we haven't done anything. And we are going to now need some assets. So let's leave this open and then just go ahead and go onto the Vuforia website. Okay, so the next step is getting the Vuforia SDK. So we're just gonna head over to www.vuforia.com and we're gonna go to their development portal. So these guys do some really, really awesome stuff, um, but we're not gonna read about it right now. We are just gonna go ahead and click develop. Um, so we're gonna need to log in to manage license keys and actually create a license key. So we're gonna go ahead and register for a new account. So just go ahead and fill all of that out and agree to selling your firstborn and then just click register. Okay, so now that you've registered and signed in, you should be looking at this page right now and we're gonna go ahead to the develop tab and under license manager, we're gonna add a new license key. So we're gonna call ours Pokemon, Pokemon AI um, and keep it mobile, keep the device mobile and choose the starter license key so that it's um, a no charge tier. So go ahead and click next. Now we're gonna to agree to their terms and conditions and click confirm. There we go, we've got our license key created. So this is one that I made earlier, but we're gonna use the one that we did just now. So go ahead and click on Pokemon AR and we're gonna copy the license key to the clipboard. And then we're gonna to go to target manager in order to add a new target. So we're gonna click add database and we're gonna call it Pokemon AR and keep the device, uh, keep the type um, of database on device. And then we're gonna click create. And there it is created right there. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Pokemon AR and we get into the target manager. So here we're gonna add a brand new target. So the target is basically the image that the camera will recognize in order to display your uh, 3D sprite or your Pokemon. Um, so this target is actually has very specific requirements. Um, and I've actually got two images here. So one is the um, back of my business card, which was taken with the iPhone camera. So the quality doesn't have to be massively high. Obviously, the uh, the, the, the better the quality, um, the better the outcome. But the most important thing is that your image has to be uh, quite colorful, high contrast, and doesn't have a lot of repetitive patterns. So try and find something that you've got um, physically, like, um, I don't know, a colorful mouse mat, or a colorful business card, or even the back of um, the front of Pokemon cards and magic cards work quite well as well. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to crop this image so that I get rid of the wooden table in the background. This will make the image recognition slightly easier, um, have a slightly easier time, and that looks about right. So I'm not using any fancy uh, Photoshop or image graphics packages at the moment. I'm just sticking with a preview, which everybody has. So there it is, cropped and ready to go. I'm going to upload this image as a target. So let's go back into Vuforia and we're gonna add target, single image, browse for that resized image and keep the width as 10. So this is quite arbitrary. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. So if you were adding augmented reality to an existing app, this is slightly more important, but given that we're just going to put it into a completely new project, um, we're just gonna put in basically the width of my business card. And then we're gonna name it biz card back and we're gonna click add. So now it's uploading the target. Great, so now that's done, um, you'll see your target, your image in a small icon over here with the same name that we used. And this is a really important um, thing that you should look at. So the rating is not really the rating of how beautiful your image is or how beautiful your face is. Unfortunately, I'm sure your faces are beautiful, but um, the rating here is actually the quality of that image um, as a target. So as I mentioned before, it has to be high contrast, very colorful, no repeat pattern, etc. And if this doesn't really comply, then you'll get a much lower rating. So I'll actually show you right now. 
Okay, so just to show you what it looks like when you have a image that isn't very suited to being a target, I've taken a picture of my palm and I have basically uploaded it as a target. And you can see here the rating is absolutely zero. And um, so this will not really work because the camera will have difficulty recognizing the landmarks of the image. You won't know how to orient your sprites. Try a couple of uploads um, of things that you have around the house um, and try to aim for a five star rating. Okay, cool. So now that we've got our target uploaded, what we're going to do is we're going to download the database. So I'm only going to click select the one that I'm going to use, which is the back of my business card, and I'm going to select download database. So we're going to actually click Unity Editor rather than the SDK and we are going to click download. So compiling database with object target and there it is downloaded. Okay, so there's actually one last thing that we have to do before we are ready to rock and roll with our Unity project and that's downloading the SDK. So just head over to the downloads tab under SDK, you'll find the download for Unity and this is the Vaforia SDK for Unity and just go ahead and click agree and it's going to download a Unity package right there. So we are close to the end of the setup. I know there's a lot of setup, but it's actually incorporating a lot of great tools and code that amazing people have written that will make our lives so much easier. So go ahead and go over to your Unity project that you just created. So it's called Pokemon AR and we are going to incorporate those two um, assets that we've just downloaded. So let's go and open up the my download folder and there it is. We've got the Vaforia um, Unity SDK as well as the Pokemon AR Unity package. So firstly I'm just going to double click on the Vaforia SDK and it's going to prepare the package inside Unity. It's going to have a whole bunch of check marks and we are going to import it all. So just click import and it's going to do its thing. Okay, and so there it is, done. And you can see it in your assets folder, everything that it's incorporated just now. Um, and the other thing is now we have to bring in our Pokemon AR Unity package. So double click on that one and again, import everything. Great, so that's all done. We've got all our assets and we are ready to go. We're ready to make our app finally. So um, on the next episode, we are going to show you how to build your Unity project, how to incorporate um, Vaforia as well as putting in the target into your app as well as getting the Pokemon sprites. So that is all to come and we'll see you on the next tutorial.